Well, I think there are levels of consciousness. There's what I call ordinary human consciousness or ordinary human awareness. And there's something that uh, in the East is called Siddhi consciousness or um, Christ consciousness in the West. Ordinary human consciousness is a consciousness in which I identify who I am on the basis of what I'm doing, what I accomplish, how much I collect, who I'm better than, and so on. A key word there is separation. That is, there's you and there's me, and, I, and where you stop and where I start is what divides us, what separates us. Then there's another kind of uh, consciousness, which is uh, one in which says, to, like the Native Americans used to say, no tree has branches so foolish as to fight among themselves. There's an awareness that there is a, there's a oneness, that we are all connected, that on a round planet, there's no choosing of sides, that, that, that all of us are connected in some way that's, that's perhaps invisible, that we can't see with our eyes or our senses, but we can feel with our hearts. And when your truth, I don't mean your truth about what you write down, but I mean your truth about what you live, is something that goes beyond your own personality and your own physicalness, you reach this level of Siddhi consciousness. And it is here where in the New Testament uh, it says through St. John, quoting Jesus, that even the least among you can do all that I have done and even greater things. But how can a person truly practice consciousness? Consciousness of spirit, if that's what you mean. Yeah, consciousness of spirit is to treat everyone out there as if they are connected to you rather than as if they're separate from you. Your separation from each other, you begin to eliminate. Your separation from the planet, as you're not on this planet, to push it around. Uh, that are connected to everything that, you know, if God is that which is everywhere at once, not a person but a presence that is, that is in all things, that means there's no place that God is not. And if there's no place that God is not, then God is in you and also in all that you would like to attract into your life. And so consciousness is really realigning your inner attention with this awareness that you are connected to everything. There was a story of a, of a guru who was just a little child in India, and, uh, and everyone knew that he was an incarnation of God. I mean, he, had just, he was living at this, what they call an avatar level. And the people said to him, uh, they were trying to trick him, and one of the people in the, in the tribe said, I'll give you an orange if you can tell me where God is. And he said, I'll give you two oranges if you can tell me where God is not. <laughs> there is no place that God is not. Once you know that, you are connected to God. We were talking off camera before about this great teacher in India in Puttaparte named Sai Baba who has this gift of manifestation, materialization, just to move his hands. And it's called the gift of fish and loaves in the New Testament. Where you think, you think about feeding people and food just appears. And he had his, 80, uh, in 1986, he had his 60th birthday. And one million 100,000 people came from all over the planet to see this holy man who had this great gift of higher awareness and higher consciousness. And one of the reporters from one of the magazines thought that they'd trap him. And they asked him the question, one of all these people, who he had granted an audience, are you God? And Sabab looked at him and said, yes, I am. And so are you. He said, the difference between you and I is that I know it and you don't. Do you know it about yourself? Absolutely. When did you first realize this? I don't know exactly when it was, but it was, at a, it was at a very low time in my life. Did it humble you or did it elevate you? It humbled me and then elevated me. You have to have that fall in order to raise, your, raise yourself to a high level. Run the risk, do you think in your mind, of arrogance with anybody watching such an outlandish statement? Or do you know in your heart that those who have open ears and open eyes will see that you're coming from what you call your center of truth? Well, I think what, one of my teachers was Abraham Maslow. I was blessed to know him in, in my lifetime. And he said, in order to reach these higher levels of awareness, you have to be independent of the good opinion of other people. Mm -hmm. And if that's perceived as arrogance or ignorance, it's, it's okay. I mean, I've been out in public, I've grown up in public over the last uh, 25 or 30 years and been on you know, all the different media shows and, and written about it and, and had it reported on. And I found I just can't do it on the basis of what other people think. In, in this last book that I wrote, The Wisdom of the Ages, I profiled 60 people who were great teachers. You know, from Buddha and Jesus and Lao Tzu to Omar Khayyam and Keats and Shelley and Yeats and, and Martin Luther King and Mother Teresa, 60 of the greatest uh, leaders, philosophers of all time. And one of the things about all of them is that they didn't do what they did on the basis of what other people out there might think. They were living, <coughs> they were detached from outcome. That's what Maslow, they were, these people were detached from outcome. That is, they weren't doing what they were doing because it was going to bring them a reward or because people were going to buy books or because they were going to make a lot of money. They're saying doing what they did because they felt it in their heart.